Hi, 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 everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm excited for tonight. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of nervous for tonight. I haven't been getting nervous doing live streams for a while, but I've got a little bit of nerves. Maybe, I mean, excitement and nerves can be the same thing. And oh my gosh, look, I'm already talking just randomly. So I'm not exactly sure how tonight's going to go. We may have guests, we may not. Um, I did get to talk to one person on Tuesday if their schedule allows they will come on and join us live and we'll, we'll bring them up and get to talk about their dog that's from the same case that Pippa came from. I will say I was talk or I emailed Angie Hay who and invited her to co-host if she wanted and, and we'll talk at the end and, and remind everybody that Angie will be typically be going at this time from now on or at least in two weeks going forward and I'll go after her. Um, but she also mentioned that, you know, she really loves animals and she doesn't want to get, you know, angry and kind of shook up or, or whatever the right word i forget the word she used um that you know some animals were neglected and so we're gonna try to keep it we're gonna tell the story as best as i can and the best that i know at least um because i've been kind of there for most of it and i've made some friends and and i've i can't say i have the inside knowledge or anything but i want to tell the story and it was it, it's been over three years and for the first couple of years, it was going through court proceedings and everything. And so nobody was really supposed to talk about it. And now we can kind of share the story and, and tell everybody what it was about. Oh, no, I'm going to sneeze. I might take this off. One second. <sighs> Welcome to a live stream. That will happen. And <laughs> it just made, it makes me laugh because I was over on Thin Blue Lane. And uh, thank you. I'll get to it in a second. I think Thin Blue Lane's sending people over here. And now my eyes are all watery from sneezing. Um, and he's talking about doing his audio books and all the things that you can't do. <laughs> you can't even tap your ring on something. And I, I'm, I'm guessing you can't sneeze <laughs> while you're recording an audio book either. But okay, so really quick, just because we may or may not have guests on, I'm going to go through hellos really quick, guys. And then I'm going to try to tell the background, excuse me, dog fur, of everything and for a while, I might um, pause chat, especially if I have somebody up. But we will get to a point where you guys can ask questions and all of that. So, and once I get through hellos, the dogs don't know this yet because Merry Christmas, everybody. They're getting a couple of presents and they, oh, they've been eyeing these things. Look at this. Look at this. Watch. I'm going to hold them up for a second. They, they haven't gotten to play with them yet, but they've seen them. And they're very curious. And, and this one. This, oh, no, you stay down. You stay down. You're not up here yet. This one actually has, it's an alligator because I've been looking for alligators. It actually has a squeaky that none of us can hear, but they can. So watch this. Dallas, you're too far down. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that in a second, guys. We'll, we'll we'll do some hellos and then we'll give them their, their presents. Then we'll kind of do the backstory of... Of the puppy mill raid and, and and everything that went into that up in Manly, Iowa. Because you guys know she's from a bad puppy mill, but I haven't really gone into it. So anyways, before I keep rambling, let's say hello to people. And I know we had a whole bunch of people in here early on. I really appreciate that. We had Marianne Jenish, who her grandma and aunt lived there up in Manly, Iowa. So Manly, Iowa is near Mason City, Iowa, at the very, pretty much the very furthest decent-sized town in Iowa, in north central Iowa. We got Debbie up in the house. Thanks for coming in. And I am going to be going through these quick just to make sure if people pop up, we can flow into that um, quickly, guys. Uh, so thank you for coming in, Lizzie. We got Sandra. We got Lillian in the house. Thanks for coming in. You guys, right now, if you put a comment in, and if you haven't said hi yet, want me to say hi, put it in real quick because I'm going to do this real quick. And, and, and then we'll go from there. And then later, if you're new to the show, guys, and and when we are looking at chat and interacting with chat, if you can put a capital SSS or capital QQQ, Q for question, S for statement. Uh, so I know that that is a question or statement that you want me to address, and I will do my best to address those later, later. Um, we'll, we'll pause chat and, and kind of ignore chat for a little bit once we get through introductions. So we got Diane Phoenix in the house. We got Amy coming in. Thanks for coming. We got Ron Darrell. I hope he got that video I made for him. I, I saw a view on it, so I think he did. We got Sandy Martin in the house. She's got to go, but I think Troy, I, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Pippa's howling at me. 
they are getting anxious. They know something's going on. There he is. Troy's in the house. He's going to stay up and watch. We got Christina in the house. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year, everybody, because I think this is the last time I'll be on a live before Christmas because we're almost there. We're, we're only a few hours from Christmas Eve, and I know... I know a lot of people are doing stuff. Hopefully people are either, maybe they can wrap presents while they watch or something like that. But if you have family, I, I, I was kind of unsure if people would be more available to watch because of the holidays in the later time. Or, you know, if everybody's on uh, trips visiting family, well, that makes sense that people aren't here. Maybe they'll catch the replay. We got Dream on Wheels, Travis and you and I saying, hey, hey, hey. I did Travis's voice there, so that must be Travis. <laughs> we got... Rails, Tails, and Trails coming in saying, howdy, howdy. Thanks for coming in. I'm going to scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. We got Box Van D in the house. Thanks for coming in, Box Van D. Merry Christmas. I get to see her soon. I'm excited for that. Also, moderators uh, and, and everybody, quite frankly, we may have people from a, a very private group of, of the adopters in here. So there may be kids. And normally, I don't worry about it too much. But I'm going to request that we do keep it uh, family friendly tonight because they may be watching the live or they may, may be watching the replay. So sometimes, because it's later, we goof around and, and go into quasi-adult topics, but but let's, let's withhold that tonight. We're still going to have fun, but I just want to make sure that if there are kids around, that they feel the parents feel comfortable watching. And, and moderators, if you can keep that in mind. And, and also, if you guys saw Thin Blue Lanes, there's been a lot of trolls dropping those crazy links that are very dangerous. So please... Keep an eye out for those. I see a bunch of blue as I look over to my actual live chat over here. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we'll we'll have that under control. We got Tim with Time for Exploring coming in saying ruff, 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 or woof, woof, woof in the last chat. Thanks for coming in, Tim. I'm going to catch up real quick here, guys. We got Tommy Wishy Devil's Adventure, Thin Blue Lane Raid. Thank you for coming over. That means they came. I thought they were coming over pretty quick. We got Julia B in the house. Now, Julia is one person that may come up if if she's with family or depending on her availability, but she has the link that she may join us. Otherwise, even if she can't, she sent, she has an Instagram for her dog. So we have some videos of her dog, Aluma, who is from the same raid. Now it was, I'm not gonna get into it too quick, but she, she, she got a dog from before the raid. I'll, I'll get it all into all that in a second. So it was really cool to get to talk to her Tuesday night when we were doing a practice live for this. Um, I was trying to make sure that everybody had a chance that might want to come up, that they could get comfortable with the software. And we had a good 30-minute chat, and it's always fun to touch base with somebody that kind of knows what you and your dog went through. Because um, there were about 300, but not everybody fully understands it. We got A&J in the house. Thanks for coming in. I'm stumbling over my words. We got Michelle in the house. Thanks for coming in. Coming over from Thin Blue Lane. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bill. I um, Billy and Nan Nancy wasn't on the live, but Bill and Nancy over at Thin Blue Lane, they go the hour before this. Um, so if you haven't checked them out, hope I got things popping up. Hopefully you can't hear that. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. As uh, We got Brett in the house. Thanks for coming in. Julia says, oh, they are ready. Now, Julia, do you have that link? Because you can pop. So Julia, if she's, she did this the other night, you can always pop in on the stream yard and still hear me and I'll just leave you down or kind of that backstage area until I kind of briefly tell the history or you can hang out and chat until I, I say, go ahead, pop up. But I, 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 she's in here. So I'm hoping she will come up now. I, now I'm excited. Cause I, I, I didn't know. And there, there may be others from that uh, Facebook group that I'm in that do have the link that just weren't able to make it on Tuesday. And, and those people as well, you're more than welcome. If you're in that Facebook group and you have the link and you want to come up and tell your dog story and, and just chat and kind of hang out. You're more than welcome to. And Julia says Luma, which is her dog from Iowa, and her bro, bro Duke, say hi. And, and I have in the description, I've put, we'll, we'll probably look at some of the Instagram, but I've also added her, those two dogs, this, or Instagram pages in the description below. We got 29 in the house, 20 thumbs up. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Please do hit that thumbs up. Let's say if it gets to no, 20, 30 in the house, Let's say 45 again. If it gets to 45, well, not only are they going to get their Christmas presents here, but if it gets to the 45 thumbs up, they'll also get that dental bone that they love so much later. We got Lindy in the house. Thanks for coming in. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to catch up. I said I was going to go quick, and then I never do. We got Becky Allen in the house. Thanks for coming in. Blaine with Really Creative Travels. Thanks for coming in. 
I'm scrolling quick now, guys, because I, I, I want to get to the story and, and really the topic that we have for tonight. I don't, know, I don't always do a topic, but we do tonight. We got our good friend Lance with Boondocking with Boomer. I am the first here. No, you're not. N nice try, Lance. You, you, I don't even think you're the first Canadian. <laughs> we got another Canadian in the house with V. We got uh, Australia represented with Janice from Oz. Thanks for coming in. We got the whole con we got the whole world here. Holy cow. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Julia says, I meant your dog's ready for Christmas. I'll join briefly when the timing is right after you tell the story. Okay, perfect. And so, okay, I'm, I'm caught up with chat. So we're, let's do this Christmas present. So they're entertained for a second. And then we will, uh oh, I better unwind. I better give myself some more room with my mic because I plugged myself in, but I'm going to be moving around a little bit. So let's just make that really long. And let's turn this. Dallas, you want to get on the bed? Get on the bed. No, get on the bed. Go on, get on the bed. Get on the bed. <laughs> there you go. So I don't know which one will get what. They Dallas usually decides. <laughs> and Pippa's always happy with the the second. As long as you have two toys, they're pretty happy. And so they'll be entertained for a while. And now my cord is knotted. Okay, so I can't go too far. <laughs> and I've got I gotta take that out. That's not good. I thought I had those removed. How are we gonna do this? You guys gotta sit. I have no system for this. I have no plan. So are you ready? I'm just going to throw them up in the air. You guys take what you want. Ready? Wait. Okay, go ahead. Those are your presents. Don't you want them? <laughs> well, that is a live stream failure. You guys. <laughs> look. look, this one. You want that? You want that? You don't like your presents. Oh, it was quacking for a second. Here you go. Here you go, Peppa. Here you go. I don't think they're sure of them. I, I've never had this happen before. Let's, uh, maybe we should cheat. One second, one second. But, but then we're going to get to the story. I swear we're going to get to the story, but we got we to gotta get them playing with their toys. So we're going to cheat. I'm going to try not to pull my computer off the stand. Sorry for the no noise for a second. They're watching me. You want that? Here. <laughs> you guys. How do you? There you go. There you go, Pippa. You want that one? Dallas, you can't steal. <laughs> okay, now, now she has claimed that one. <laughs> okay, Pippa, you get this one then. Here you go. You can have that one. Hopefully they start playing with them a little bit. There we go. Now they're going. You put a little peanut butter on there for them and they'll start liking it, I guess. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. I buy them Christmas presents and they don't even want them. Now, what a terrible dog dad. <laughs> now, now for, for those of you guys that know me, you know I, I downsize to the trailer. So we don't actually carry a lot of toys for them. So they're probably like, what are these again, dad? Pippa loves her tennis balls. But otherwise, they've only got, I think, about three toys in here other than the tennis balls. They, they you know, they get most of their uh, energy out going on walks and whatnot. So, okay, let's just catch. Yep, they want a treat. That's what they were. That's what they were waiting for. But dad, it's not. But you see, they, they're like, this isn't. They look confused. <laughs> that that was kind of embarrassing. Should have gone with the tennis ball. Yeah, well, I've still got tennis balls. They're around here somewhere. Uh, they they all end up under the bathroom or in the bathroom because that door is, has a big gap that they roll under and Pippa throws them in there. We got Rob. Now we got the UK in the house. Holy cow. How many countries do we have in here now? Four or five? We got Megan. Thank you for coming in. And James from the East Coast. I think it's Pennsylvania, right? And Sue's coming in. All right. So now that I've said hello to everybody. So let me... 
do my best to briefly not not go into great detail on, on the puppy mill case that Pippa came from, but I've always kind of wanted to share the story. And it happened over three years ago now. It I think it was November 12th of 2018. And that's when the ASPCA actually went in and raided this property. And so that what happened is Iowa has pretty much terrible animal welfare laws, not to get political or anything, but it's a it's a farming state. That's what their their economy relies on. So so their animal laws are very relaxed, basically because of cattle and chickens and all of that. And, and so the ASPCA, from my understanding, this isn't the ASPCA. No, Pippa just threw a toy. The, ASP, the ASPCA has not told me this, but just from me following the case and everything, they, they, they typically won't spend a lot of time in a place like Iowa because they'll go through a lot of work, spend a lot of money. And as you'll see, as you'll see when I tell you what the court decision was, um, you don't get a lot of results, unfortunately. Excuse me, my nose always won- runs when I'm doing live streams. And and so what happened was this lady, they her husband passed away, and, and that's very sad and unfortunate. And they had they were breeding Samoyeds up in northern Iowa. And when he passed away, obviously there's grief, and I, I don't know all the background to that. Um but it got out of control for her and she can no longer take care of the dogs. Now, one thing I did learn, I'm not a breeder. You know, Dallas is my first dog, actually. And, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm pausing chat for those that don't know. I'm, I'm going to, I've said hellos to everybody that I can. I see Solix coming in. Hello, Solix. Thanks for coming in. Um, but but for a bit, I'm going to ignore chat once I tell the story. Then we're going to bring our guest up and, and then we'll have a discussion with her. And at that point, once, once we kind of share a little bit. Then we'll go in and if you guys have questions or statements, and we'll we'll kind of interact with the chat more. Which, well, Pippa, it wasn't your turn yet. The star of the show. I didn't call her up here. She, Pippa, you want to say hi? Hi. This is for those that don't know. This is Pippa. You want to look at the camera? No. Look at the camera. There's nothing in there, but. So so, anyways, it was a, kind of an unfortunate. Um, situation and she ended up with a lot of dogs and and one thing i didn't know one thing she was not doing was she was not separating the males and the females and they kept having litters and they kept having litters and she'd keep the litters together and when they were old enough then they'd have a litter and then it just got out of control and so at the end of the day the the, there were i guess the sheriff's office and the, the humane society of northern iowa which isn't a big humane society you're kind of up kind of in the middle of nowhere up by mason city and they were aware of the situation for about 11 months before they actually did the raid and they were trying to talk to her and and what she would do is she i guess she would give up some dogs but they were the dogs that were they had a lot of problems she was not giving up the dogs that were younger and breeding and so by the time they raided her the property when when all the animals were accounted for hello hello (laughs) there, there were i i think there were over 300. Now I read in the article three, three, 302 dogs. I also know that there were some cats that lived in the house and, and the house was in pretty bad shape and pretty things everywhere. We'll just, you know, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, it got to the point they tried to work with her for about 11 months. She was, she wasn't giving a lot of the, the dogs up. And so the numbers were only going up. It was, it, it was not helping. So, so my understanding were there, Hello. <laughs> there, there were two, there, there are, well, there's more than two Samoyed rescue spe- groups specific to Samoyeds in the U.S., but some of the bigger ones, there's one in Utah and one in San Francisco. The interesting thing about the one in San Francisco, that is where Julia ended up getting her dog. And her dog was one of the dogs that were given up prior to the actual raid. And then, though, like I said, those dogs were typically, in my understanding, were harder cases that she could not, she could no longer take care of or deal with or interact with a lot of the dogs came out of there with absolutely no human socializing or socialization so pippa's case pippa wasn't the really bad cases pippa i mean you guys have seen pippa she has a lot of fear um she she when we got her she was outside her socialization window when she learns to interact with people and so (laughs) she's now hearing uh dallas make that duck quack (laughs) so now she's interested like wait what's going on over there so anyways pippa you know she's come a long ways 
but she wasn't the really bad cases. And, and I've talked about there was one that I saw because I was the second one that the Omaha Humane Society called in to look at the dogs and potentially adopt one. And I do remember one named Ansel that was eight years old and he had been there his entire life. And, and that was, I will never forget the look on that dog's face. So there were, there are some amazing people out there. I, you know, I, I took, Pippa wasn't an easy dog. And I, I, I took a dog that I believed I could handle. I, I felt bad leaving the really bad cases in there, but I, with my travel at the time, I, I did not feel comfortable that I could give them the commitment that they would require. So go, going forward, I see Janice saying Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas to everybody. I think I said, I don't know. And so, yeah, there, there's been a lot of work, but there are some absolute adopt uh, angels that adopted some of those dogs. And of course, you know, that was in 2000, November 2018 is when the raid was. So Pippa's, we're about three years and a month out now. Uh, see, uh, the rails, tails, and trails saying it's John. I missed something. And so, so the really interesting thing, I, I did meet somebody. I'm just going to call her Kay because I don't think she's going to be able to come up here today. She's pretty shy too, but, but she's a forensic vet for the ASPCA. And I've mentioned this and she took some of the harder dogs, depending on how the live goes. I might tell you guys, um, without pictures or anything, some of their stories, but, um, yeah, it was really interesting. And so when you go in on these raids, you can't just raid the dogs and take them. You have to actually build a case to get custody as well. And eventually the owner gave up custody willingly for most of them. Dallas, you can't destroy both of those toys the first night. <laughs> now she's playing with them or eating them. Um, so you have to build a case because once they raid them, they don't really legally have the right yet to adopt them out so now you've got 300 animals that you're just got in a warehouse or wherever they were staging them and that's that's a lot of animals to take care of and winter was coming that's why they did it when they did it was the coldest day of the year that i, I forget the exact temperature i just remember that it was the coldest day of the year so far it was middle of november in northern iowa typically in iowa south dakota you can start getting snow as early as halloween that's not typical, but it can. That's kind of when the, the freezing temperatures get in there. So they kind of got to a point they had no choice. Even though they are snow dogs, they're like Arctic dogs. They can't be left out. They can't be left outside without proper straw and all of that. And typically a lot of them are inside dogs too. Oh, there you go. Now you're kind of looking pretty on the camera. And, and so they kind of had to just go in and, and do it. And that was the really interesting thing learning later is you know, they have to build that case. So they, I think, even though there were 300 animals, I think the lady ended up being charged because the level of proof, look at all that fluff, is so high to actually get a conviction. I think they only charged her with 17 counts of animal neglect or something like that. So unfortunately, like I said, the animal laws in Iowa aren't real strong. And the, the, so it went through the court cases. She did end up voluntarily giving up um, the rights to many of the animals, not all the animals. There were some cats and stuff she was really attached to, I guess. And she tried to fight for those. But she did so that they could be adopted out and that their lives could start, you know, start over in the new homes and start the socializing and all of that. I, I think she did have some cats and like one or two dogs that she did try to keep. Kat, that's a good point. I see your comment. And if you want to remind me later, I did I, I did see that. We can talk about that um, once we get uh, Julie up here and have the conversation if we have time. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I saw exactly what you're talking about there, Kat. And that, I saw it on the page from where I used to live on Facebook. So yeah, that's that's a sad one too. So so anyways, the, the court cases went through. She I think she finally did get uh, 17 counts. She found, was found guilty of, I think, 17 counts of animal neglect. Even though you had 300 animals, they had to either prove like they don't have water, they're cold, they're not being properly cared for, all of that stuff within the Iowa laws. And I won't go too far into this because I know some people were really frustrated with it. I guess it is what it is. Um, I focus more on, you know, Pippa and working with her and, and moving forward. She ended up basically getting two years probation, and, and that's already over. So basically, she wasn't allowed to have, a, I think she was allowed to have some animals or maybe none. I don't know. But it was basically two years, and then she potentially could be a breeder again. So 
one, one reason I want to tell the story is just to make everybody aware of the puppy mills and the impacts that they have on the animals. And that's why if you can, or if there's animals that can be adopted, that's the best first route, in my opinion. And I see Janice saying 2.25 PM. I was like, oh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I was trying to figure out what all those numbers were coming through. Hi, Naj. Thanks for coming in. I see Naj coming in. And so, yeah, just if you guys can, if you're going to get an animal, one, realize the commitment. That's why I don't really like animals being given for Christmas gifts, because the, the person that's going to have the responsibility isn't the one making the commitment. It's the person that's buying it as a gift. And yeah, so I don't know where else I was going to go with that. If, if Julie's still or Julia is still out there, uh, you can go ahead and jump on the StreamYard side if you want. We'll have a uh, we'll, we'll have a brief conversation with her about her dog Luma, as well as she got another Samoyed later. Um, uh oh, I'm forgetting the name. I want to say Doug. I know that's not right. I'm thinking of a different story. It is. Uh, it's in my description. One second. What is it called? Duke. Duke, not Doug. I thought it was a D. And, and so if she's got, to, she may be busy too, because you know holidays. But a little bit, I don't want to tell her story if she's able to come up. So I'll give her a couple minutes. The the other one, I see Megan dropping the Fluffy Land Cloud link. Now, that's another channel that started when the reporter for the for the courier, for the, the article that I dropped in my community tab. Holy cow, Peppa, you're just going crazy with shedding. Um, she started a uh, her YouTube. I've mentioned it a couple times. I see Julia trying to connect. Okay, there we go. I see her down there. So the fluffy land cloud that um, Megan just dropped in chat is another YouTube channel. She's got, I think, only three videos out there. But she 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 decided to kind of document some of the stuff on YouTube as well. So, I, she, I mean, it doesn't look like she's trying to really do YouTube. But if you guys like the dogs, it's, it's somebody else that has content out there. Plus, Julia has her Instagram, which are similar to the shorts that you guys are familiar with with mine. So with that, I see Julia down there. I'll get a thumbs up from her. She's ready to go. All right, I'm excited now. Let's see here. Add stream. I'm gonna move us around a little bit. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear, perfect. So, so, Hi, real, <laughs> so real quickly, <laughs> they know it's, it's showtime. Showtime, mom. <laughs> Just tell us real briefly <laughs> about, about Luma and not Doug, Duke. <laughs> And, and, and when you got them and, and some of that background. Yeah, well, thank you so much for inviting me and also just hosting this and sharing their story because I think it is so unique and so interesting. So it's awesome to hear someone else tell it as well. Um, as you were saying, I ended up getting Luma just prior to the raid. So um, my kind of version of the story or what I had heard was that San Francisco Samoyed Rescue had gotten wind of this situation where it was kind of like a hoarding puppy mill type thing in Iowa. And the woman was giving up all the dogs that she couldn't adopt out. And the Iowa Humane Society was kind of inundated with Samoyeds. And so a couple Samoyed rescues kind of stepped up and found homes for them. And so we ended up getting Luma around May of 2018. And we were told like, okay, here's the backstory, but you can't talk about it because we're really trying to kind of finalize making sure that she couldn't keep doing that. And so they were still gathering evidence. They were still getting other dogs that she had willingly surrendered. So they had all of their like documentation of birthday, et cetera. Um, and it wasn't until November when the raid actually occurred that we were able to say, okay, it's out there in the public now, like there were newspaper articles about it. And um, there's a Facebook group where just, it's a private group just for the other owners of the Samoya dogs. And it was really interesting to see just how many of them had those same issues with socialization and with fear. And so Luma was a great example of that. Um, we were pretty unique in that we don't, or we didn't at the time have another dog. And so most of the Iowa dogs went to families that had other dogs because of how much they needed that dog socialization. Um, so she did pretty well with daycare and dog parks for a good portion of time. But when the pandemic hit, um, she was definitely starved for that socialization. And so my husband was working from home and we decided we would think about expanding the fur family. And around that time, San Francisco Samoyed Rescue had an owner surrender of a female male 
bonded pair uh, that they did not know at the time the female was pregnant. And so a litter of puppies was born. And I thought, well, my hope is to always rescue. I think there's so many dogs that need rescues and we'd fallen in love with the breed. So we said, well, if one of the puppies could come home with us, we could rescue another Samoyed. And so that was how Luma got her brother Duke. And they've been best friends ever since. <laughs> awesome. And real quickly, I'm going to have to scroll up, but I've seen this name before. Um, Jane Cruz just said hi. And oh, let me pull this up. I, I should be actually pulling up the comments as I see it. I, I'm not really paying real close attention to chat, but I do see Jane Cruz in here. I've seen that name on the Facebook group and she's actually with the, I, I, I recognize her from being with the San Francisco Samoyed Rescue. So that's ab absolutely awesome that she's in here. Jane, I, I, I'm not going to pressure anybody to come up. Thank you for being here. But there is that link. If, if anybody is here from that Facebook group, the, the link to the StreamYard site is in there if you want to join like Julia has. And you can you can tell us about the rescue if you want. Um, I don't have Jane a real basically formal... basically led the brigade from San Francisco Samoyed Rescue to help with this. So she was absolutely instrumental in kind of helping at the very, very early stages. So she knows like absolutely everything about the case. So she's a wealth of knowledge. That is awesome. And like you said, they, they were pretty much the first rescue involved and that was happening very quietly. When, when the case went live, I mean, it, it did get a lot of publicity. It was like where the dogs were going, it was all over the news. And the, the thing that was, that scared me at the time. And, and I, I, I'm always, people that follow my channel know I'm kind of paranoid about this, putting my fluffy, beautiful dogs on YouTube and over glamorizing it. And I probably need to mention it more about the responsibility and the work and all of that. So I'm always kind of paranoid about that. And back when, when, when the raid happened and I saw all the news reports and everything, I was, I was nervous about that. Cause I, everybody's like, Oh, you, you'd watch like Facebook, like local Facebook groups and be like, Oh, everybody look, these beautiful dogs and blah, blah, blah. And they were talking about, like kind of like Christmas gifts and that sort of thing. And you're just like, oh no. And, and so for me, I, I wasn't sure because I, like, like we were talking about the other night when we had the chance to chat, I was still work or traveling for work. And I was really lucky to have a friend, Molly. Maybe I shouldn't say, well, I just said it. I should have said M, but um, she, she doesn't work for the Omaha Humane Society, but she does a lot of work with a lot of the rescues in the Omaha area. And before I chose to even apply, I text her and said, hey, I'm thinking of putting an application in. I saw that they just opened the application window. They did it quicker than I was expecting. I was like, I, I thought I'd have a little bit more time to think about it. And I was like, so if I put one in and I know some of these dogs may be more of a challenge at first, would you be willing to help me? And she was like, oh, absolutely. Because she had met Dallas and Dallas was one of the reasons that I was chosen as an adopter because she was she's a very she's an alpha dog that kind of shows Pippa you know what to do and she'll kind of break her out of that fear or help her overcome that fear. So uh, I I had so many people along the way, including I'll just say M and K, um, as some of the people that helped me out and and, and also and, and I see her going off screen and that's okay. Just so you know, Julia or yeah, she went on mute too. And so we, we did some practicing the other night. So she knows the functionality that if she needs to do something with the dogs or kids or family or anything like that, she's able to jump off real quick. Actually, I can probably, I'm Julia, if you can hear me, I'm just going to put you in the basement for a second. And when you're done doing whatever, I can bring you back up because I'll see you. And, and so I, I do have some notes on, on, people to thank and such and, and some other stories. Um, my friend that I'm just referring to is Kay, the, the forensic vet who clearly did a good job because with how hard it is to get a convic conviction in Iowa. Uh, one second here. Okay. I, I, I see your comments in the private chat. And, and so we can, if you, if you have something to add while you're down there, Julia, just put your camera back on and I'll bring you back up. Um, and, and, and when we hear in a little bit, we can always, we'll, we'll open up the chat for questions and, and we'll probably want to bring her back up because people, people have kind of met my dogs. They know my dogs quite a bit because I'm on here a lot. Um, but, but they've never met your dogs and her dog's name is Luma. We may, maybe we'll get her. I, I don't know if we can get her on. Um, are you, are we able to show Luma off? 
can we just okay i'm gonna bring her back up so you guys can hopefully see luma and, and uh not doug why do i keep saying doug duke <laughs> I'm going to give me a thumbs up when, when, when you're ready to come back up. We're going to wait one second. They're going to, they're going to get settled here for a second. And what? I missed something. Okay. I'm going to see, I'm going to pull up some of these questions that we might get to. Okay. We'll get to that in a second, Tim. I see the thumbs up. So I'm going to bring her back up and let, let's see. So we got Luma and Duke there. Yeah. So I like to do a lot of training with the kids so I can put them on camera. They do love chicken. So I've got some chicken for them. All right. They're on camera. Sit. Yes, it's a girl. All right. Luma, can you go bear? Well, she doesn't. Duke doesn't know bear yet. Luma, bear. Good girl. Duke, sit. Yes. Luma, can you spin? Spin. Good girl. Duke, come on. You can spin too. Come on. Look, it's good. There you go. Good boy. Yes. So we do a lot of training every night so that they work on focus and attention. And so Luma is my little star and Duke is still in training. <laughs> right. Here. Yes. Duke, you're getting in the way, kid. There you go. And my favorite, of course, is when they show me love. So I say, Luma, kiss. Thank you, Duke, kiss. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And, right. and one thing that I, I, I watched that uh, Instagram video that you did on the training and every once in a while, people are, will be like, "Your Nate, your dogs are so well trained. And I will admit, I have, especially once I got Pippa, it's hard to train them because Dallas gets in the way. She, she just won't let me give her that individual attention. And like where I'm at right now, if I take her outside, Dallas will just be barking and howling. And it's, just, it's so hard, but people will see like, the, the important thing early on was to they, they were both scarfing down their food like there was competition, right? And and so they absolutely learned to wait for their food until I tell them. And so people see videos of, oh, your dogs will wait for the food. How do you do that? I'm like, that was essential. I had no way around that. But otherwise, I mean, they, they know to sit, they know to wait, but uh, she's actually kind of learned shake now, but pretty basic commands. I was watching your video and was so impressed with the training that you've done with Luna. I was, I was just in awe. If you guys want to see good, a well-trained dog, go check out that the um, the Instagram. I think it was on Luma's page, wasn't it? Yeah, Luma has her training videos. And we do separate them for training because it's very difficult um, when they're both kind of on top of each other. So wait is a great command if you can say okay wait and we've started working on luma this duke this so that they have to listen for each other's name but sometimes i'll have my husband bring one of them in another room and we'll spend five to ten minutes with individual dogs for training right yeah i tried to do that when i when i was still in the house like bring them outside and dallas oh dallas she she is a very demanding she's a very she's got she's she's a mix so some people think she's husky because she's got that strong personality but the, the other thing we talked about a little bit, because because, you know, I travel full time now and and I was telling you the other night that that private group that we have, it gave me a lot of confidence seeing that other people were successfully getting their dogs out camping. And, and that kind of got me to. Um, Sorry, I just saw Jane saying something, but yes, but she, kinda... she has Duke's sister as well, because that they were from that litter. So Duke's sister and and one of the Iowa dogs are both at, at Jane's house, too. Oh, awesome. That, that, that is one of the exciting things. The, the rescuers I'll, I'll get into, um, maybe later. Uh, my friend Kay, she, she ended up adopting a couple of the really harder cases too, but it, it, it's so exciting to see that, you know, through the process where for a long time, I couldn't get my biggest hurdle was getting Pippa to be willing to go outside on a walk. Because I was convinced if I can get her out on a walk, she'll see the different sounds that she's hovering and hearing that she doesn't know what it is. But and I put the leash on and she, you know, that's one of the things I was told. Just put the leash on her, get her used to the leash. And they even go around in the outside. And anytime I tried to actually get her out front to go on the walk, she would literally chew through the leashes, which which was a good thing. She did it before we got outside. So we we'd kind of transition into the garage and. It, it took a while to get her to go on a walk. And it, eventually I, you know, I did it with Dallas. I was kind of nervous if I was going to be able to handle both of them, but 
so what what was the biggest hurdle you had with luna i think we talked about this because she was kind of an only child right yeah and you know it's interesting you say that because walks were definitely a huge struggle and dogs need a lot of exercise but i was in a city so i was in san jose and walking was just a really scary thing for her so if we went around the block she would be very visibly uncomfortable most of the time and so I know, baby. Um, so daycare and dog parks gave her the exercise and she would love hiking she would love nature but she didn't want to walk in the city and so we kind of had to figure out what worked for her I don't think so. I don't um, and it turns out that walking in nature was what she needed so she needed lots of hikes i'm gonna mute for just a minute while he's <laughs> And so you guys, you guys aren't used to my dogs barking, but a lot of them are very vocal. Da Dallas will talk and Pippa will howl. Normally mine don't bark, but a lot of them do. And she actually has her, uh, I think her command was sing. And, and they'll kind of talk to, yeah. So she's like, yeah, that was the command. So everybody can kind of yeah. train theirs with the words that Luma you want. Luma is very but... vocal. Duke likes to bark. So they're different dogs, different um, personalities, but he is a much more vocal kid. So I'm curious if, if Jane's still in the chat or if you know this, they're one of the, when I first got Dallas, I think they were on Facebook, but there's a, a, a Samoyed known as coconut rice bear. Do you know who that is? Cause they're, they're in the San yeah, Francisco. He's in San, oh, she's, she's in San Francisco. So she's, um, a San <laughs> she was, she was not a rescue dog. She was a bad dog, but she's very, very well trained. Oh, yeah. And, and that was going to be my question was, did any chance that Coconut Rice Bear came from that rescue league out there? But I I, I hadn't heard. But yeah, he. Yeah. so He's, the dog she, is a she, Coconut but I think Rice the owner is the queen. She, she is a girl. Um, but the owner is a guy, right? Yeah, he has a male human and female human. And so they, they keep okay. their personal stuff quiet. But they have Instagram, Facebook, and they go do a lot of outings. Um, in the San Francisco area. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I would follow them. And, you know, it, that, that that's one reason I started my channel is because people like that, especially coconut rice bear. It's like, well, if, if I'm having a bad day, I can watch that and it kind of turns my day around. So that was kind of the thought, especially like my short videos with the dogs uh, that, that are just supposed to be kind of fun and put a smile on people's faces. So uh, I see Kenny saying we got a, a cast love raid coming in. Thank you for, for the raid cast love and Kenny for coming over. Um, at this point, I, Jul I think Julia is just hiding because the dogs are barking. <laughs> she was, um, let, let's go ahead and take some questions uh, for those. A lot of people already know this, but if there's anybody new in chat, just because we can't read every single uh, statement, if you can start it out with the capital QQQ, if it's a question, so I can make sure I catch it. Or capital SSS if, if you're making a statement such as I adopted a dog um, and it's this breed, that sort of thing. I'm going to scroll up. I think we had a question up here that I pulled up briefly. So this was Jane talking about she adopted one of the dogs. Where did that question go? Oh, hi, Lacey. Sorry, I was ignoring chat. Uh, we always try to say hi to Lacey because Lacey's a very special um viewer of a lot of our our social media pages so hi Lacey I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas and holidays Lacey's going to be mad because she missed the puppies well there, we will keep this we will keep it so they'll be able to watch the replay and so Jane's saying you are an awesome mom I'm still looking for I'm going to try to pull up and make sure I don't miss one of Jane's comments too is it as the Samoyed Rescue received the Samoyed starting on February 2018, we started gathering reports from our vets to send to the authorities to build the case in order to do the seizure. Yeah, so so like I've kind of mentioned and you mentioned, a lot of it when when the court case goes through, they don't they they have to build a case. So it makes it kind of, you know, you just don't share too much, right? Um, that for a long time I didn't really speak real in depth about Pippa's past, other than to say she was from a puppy mill. Um, okay, S Susan with New Horizons has a question. How old was the dogs when you got them? So I'll let you answer that, then I'll briefly talk about mine too. So Luma was seven months when I got her, and I think that she had been seized probably just a little bit before that because she had to make the trip over from Iowa to San Francisco. Um, but she was seven months when I got her. And Pippa was just outside her socialization window. She was 
they said four months, but I think she was five or six. I, I don't know if they meant four months from the raid and then it was another month because the raid was November 12th. My gotcha day was December 5th. And then we got Tim with time for exploring. And, and I think this was the first question that came in. Then I'll scroll back down if there's more coming in. Thank you, moderators. I see you guys hard at work over there. I didn't see the message, but I appreciate the moderators, especially with all the trolls that have been on YouTube lately. I appreciate you guys so much. Tim's question is, how often do you have to give the fluffy dogs a bath? I'm curious your answer to this one. Um, whenever they get dirty to the point where they have ticks. So if they don't have ticks, they usually brush out just fine. But if they have ticks, then they get a bath and we make sure to get all of that um, taken care of. So when we go hiking or camping, we do that a little more frequently as a precaution as well. But without, um, without them getting too dirty, they don't really need them all that frequently, as long as you're brushing them regularly. Right. And, and, and that's what I, I've kind of always said the same thing, and it's always surprised people. Like, you don't have to give them baths as often as you think, unless even sometimes when they get in the mud, it, it will kind of dry and fluff off, unless they get really bad. And I almost, or, or every, I mean, if it goes a really long time, you just got to give them a bath. And, and grooming is obviously important. And, and keeping up on the brushing so it doesn't matter and all that. I had a question for you. Then I'm going to scroll down to see if chat has more questions. But on your Instagram, I, I saw I saw the dogs in water. So do you end up, my my problem with Dallas, Pippa, Pippa's kind of scared of the water, so I don't try to force it on her. But Dallas, when we were traveling, if there's a lake, she tries to go in. And I don't let her go too far in because, like, her belly will start matting. So do you have to dry them off or what do you do when they get into the lakes or something like that? So I find that especially out here, the weather is usually really nice and sunny. So as long as there's good sun and they dry off, they're okay. Um, Luma really likes kind of running against the couch to dry herself off. And so she'll, she'll kind of dry off on her own. Um, but I actually just invested in a very nice high power blow dryer. Um, when we first got Luma, she was very scared of blow dryers. So we would kind of let her air dry or towel dry and brush her and make sure it was a nice sunny day. Um, but Duke, uh, Jane did such a wonderful job with the puppies. And so she made sure that they were exposed to things like hair dryers and they both do totally fine now that Luma's more secure and Duke was, um, exposed to that in his early period. So, um, very cool. That, that's one thing that people don't realize. I've had it happen once with Dallas, not with Pippa, but Dallas, I, I, I think I was, I gave her a bath at home once and, and I've got that, that high power uh, blow dryer that's special for, for dogs like this. And I, I must not have gotten her, was it her right hunch dry enough? And she was, she was, yep, exact. Is that, that like a pig something? What's the brand on that? It's yeah, it's it's a pig brand or something. There's a this flying the, pig. The flying pig, the pro yep. groomer dryer. So yep, I've toy. got the same one but green. <laughs> and, and and so yeah, the people don't realize it's really important if you're gonna give them a bath, just how important it is to make sure that they get dry because they they can get I don't know if it's a skin infection, but it's not good for their skin. And so unfortunately. Dallas got one of those once, and I think it was because I didn't get her dry enough. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but that's the feeling I get. So I'm going to go back to chat now. Let's go scroll down here. Oh, here's a question. Uh, Megan with Going Green Mom. Oh, that's not a question. She's just showing everybody how to do it. <laughs> I didn't get far enough down, apparently. Okay. Susan has a question with New Horizons. Question. How old? Oh, nope. We answered that. I'm not far enough. Now I see the trolls. I'm going to catch up, guys. I promise. Jane says coconut is a Vanderbilt baby. Interesting. So, so those that, that I'm talking about another social media Samoyed icon, coconut rice bear. If I, I think they do have a YouTube channel now as well. Yeah, when they stink or are blowing the coat is the key time. Yeah, if, if it goes long enough that they start smelling, yeah, it does get to a point where you have to give a bath. And of course, the uh the kind of the springtime and kind of the fall time when their um, coats are coming out. The interesting thing for me, Pippa does not shed anywhere nearly as bad as Dallas because that whatever mix Dallas is, it's like she sheds year round. And, and Pippa sheds, but just not nearly as bad. Sean S says, we had a Samoyed when younger. We 
she kept herself clean. Yep, they, they do a pretty darn good job on that. Uh, we got, okay, here's a question. Even though Lance is not following the QQQ rule, he just says, question. Whose dog sheds more, Nate or yours? So, so we, we, I mean, we've never met. We know each other only through that private Facebook group that's kind of a support channel for the, for all the adopters and, and people that were involved with the case. So I, I don't think either of us could answer that question. <laughs> they, I will say, just, Luma and Duke do not shed, <laughs> shed excessively. So they're, they're pretty chill. Luma's only blown her coat once in the years that we've had her. So they're, they're pretty low maintenance so far for, for Samoyeds. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, if I had never had Dallas, if I only had Pippa, I'd probably be saying the same thing. And of course, when they're both around each other and all you see is fur everywhere all the time that you're constantly cleaning up. <laughs> we got, okay, Megan has a question. You didn't say how how old yours were when you got them, Nate. So so I thought I said Pippa, Pippa was, they, they said four months. I think she was actually five or six. But um, the important thing was she was outside her socialization window. So it was an important as early on as possible, I had my friend, we'll just call her M. I had a neighbor and I had a house sitter. So I had three people plus myself that we were constantly trying to uh, work with her to get her used to people. And then I don't know if we talked about that. We talked about the pandemic a little bit the other night, but I always lived by myself and then I got off the road. So we, I felt like we were doing really good progress with Pippa. And what are you doing? <laughs> She's going to get settled here. You stay up here. But anyways, the pandemic came and, you know, I did things like we would we would just take her and go sit in the, the vet's um, waiting area or or in, into the groomer's waiting area just to try to get her used to those surroundings. Well, the pandemic came and it was like, well, all that stopped and I became the only person she saw. She didn't see those other three people. And so for me. Now, now, now you're married. So how many, is it just you and your husband there in the house? So they at least got two of you. So, so, so did the, did the pandemic have an impact on her at all? Did she kind of not get to yeah. see as many people or. It, it wasn't as much the human socialization as the dog, because as an only child, she went to daycare and dog parks all the time. And then when all dog parks closed, all daycares closed, um, her lack of dog socialization really had a strong impact on her. So we, we really did our best. And um, I think when the opportunity came to rescue a second dog, we thought that that would be really good for her. And her personality has changed so much since she got her sibling because there are certain things that she used to be really scared of and she's so pack motivated. So like our family is her pack. If my husband, myself and Duke were out in the living room and some scary sound would happen outside, Usually Luma used to bolt and run to the other room and hide, but now she's like, well, the whole pack's together. No one else seems bothered. Even Duke, she would be a lot more relaxed. And so the pandemic was hard when she couldn't socialize with other dogs. <laughs> We're still right. working on people, but she's warmed up a lot, especially seeing Duke with people. She'll be like, oh, okay, they're not so scary. <laughs> that, that was the interesting thing when we were talking because you had the only child where it, the challenge for you was getting her around other dogs. For me, it was trying to get her around other people <laughs> because she has Dallas. Which, which, when you told me that the other day, and I told this, I was like, I was surprised that they they gave you one without the other dog. And I think that just said so much about how qualified you were and how good you're taking care of Luma because that that was almost a, it. They didn't say it was a a, a requirement, but it was it. it I, I watched Pippa. And it took her a while to warm up to me, but Dallas, it was like, she just wanted to be with Dallas, like just by her side. Cause that's all they ever knew. Uh, she uses the K9 pro two. Is that the blower? And then Solex says, Oh, Nate, Nate's dog shed more. I've seen the videos of him de shedding, which is, you know, the, the video I have of using that blower actually isn't nearly as bad as it actually can get on Dallas. Solex. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, if you take them to the groomers, the, the whole room is just, there's fluff flying around when it's that time of year and it's, it's, it's time to get it all out real good. Um, okay, we got, um, real quick, we got 38 thumbs up. I said when we get to 45 thumbs up, we've got 39 in here. If you guys don't mind hitting that thumbs up, we need seven more. And then you, 
every most people in here know the routine. Then the dogs get their dental dog bone that they love so much because Dallas looks like she's finally getting tired of that toy now that she's destroyed it. Oh, thank you, Meg Megan put out uh, Coconut Rice Bears YouTube. Absolutely. And if you guys love my dogs, I always say this. I don't, I don't mind there being a whole bunch of YouTube channels that have fluffy white dogs. There can never be too many of them. Um, okay, I'm going to skip a bunch till I see the QQQ. What do you use to trim their nails? Tucker is afraid of regular nail clippers. Do, do you do that yourself? Yeah, I trim Luma's nails. Uh, we started doing it really early on because she was scared of everything. So we might as well trim the nails and <laughs> just get her used to it. Um, I can do them on my own. She's such a submissive dog that she just kind of like would stay frozen at the beginning and kind of just tolerate it. But now what I'll usually do is have my husband hold her and she just goes like this until it's all over and maybe we feed her some frozen yogurt. Um, Duke, we've been using the Dremel on him since he was a tiny little puppy. And so he's totally down with that. And so he gets the Dremel. So, so you're lucky you have that extra person to hold the dog. My dog, Pip is not terrible and I'm really not good at it. Dallas, I swear it's impossible. I will typically take her to a professional. I was so lucky my first year when I found, uh, she was a younger, somewhat inexperienced house sitter, but she was really good with dogs. And that's what she did. She she worked at a doggy daycare. And so she did that at work. And so I had the stuff. So she would do it for me just kind of as a bonus. You know, I would tip her extra for it. But um, she was so great with them. And, and she ended up moving. I was so sad to leave or lose her. And then the pandemic came. But that's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, the, the that's a good question there, Susan. We got some people. We got Alan. I don't think I've said hi to Alan yet. Thanks for coming in. Um, Jane, once they are neutered or spayed, they will shed in smaller amounts. Interesting. It, it'd be fun to talk to her someday just to, you said she's, you've gotten to meet her, right? It's probably part of the, the process. And, but yeah, finding those people, like I said, Dallas was my first dog. I relied so heavily on my friends that I'm just calling M and K. When I had a question, I was like, or, or Dallas, she got, she was always that not Pip, but Pip has always been healthy. She's just got the behavioral issues. Dallas is the one that will get sick. And she, it, I finally found a food that seems to have solved it. But when you have those expert friends that are willing to take those questions, it makes all the difference. Okay. So okay. here's a question. I just, I didn't, I didn't see this question coming, but so Susan with new horizons says, what, do, what type of uh, food do the dogs prefer? What, what do you have your dogs on? Well, it's a great question because are you asking what I feed them or what they want me to feed them? Because I do think it's a really interesting thing when we say, well, what does a dog prefer? So I've done actual taste tests occasionally where I'll put a bunch of different treats out and then you have them wait. And when you release them, you see, well, what treats do they actually like? What are they going to go for? Um, right. And so my dogs mostly get kibble because I think it's very accessible. They can take it anywhere. We use the science diet. Um, but I think you can also mix in wet food occasionally to make it more interesting or have like chicken, which makes it more interesting. Um, they have a, a snuffle mat where I'll sometimes freeze cooked chicken and then hide it in the snuffle mat. And then they have to use their nose to kind of find the food and supplement to get a little puzzle toy activity. Um, and then some of their kibble goes into a puzzle toy as well. Um, I think in terms of food, recommendations. Uh, there's just so many different routes that you can take. There's people who do like raw feeding. There's people who do the grain free feeding. So there's lots of different routes that you can take. Um, and I would recommend consulting your veterinarian if you had specific questions, especially if your dog has like dietary um, restrictions. And that was one of the interesting things for me because Dallas would always get like an upset stomach like every other month or something. And sometimes they'd put her on antibiotics and it would fix it. I had her on, wasn't, you said science nutrition. It was something else. It was a very specialized brand that that's hard, that that's kind of hard to find. So when I knew it, when I had the house, I knew where to find it. It wasn't a problem. When I went on the road, it was like, we need to find, put, put them on a food that I can find consistently on the road, no matter where I'm at in the U S. And so that was the challenge, but I'll be honest. So, so what we, I have them on now is Purina one because uh, chicken and rice formula, because you can find it at Walmart, you can find it at dollar stores. It was one of the brands that my, my, my vet gave me three brands to try, try out. 
and, and and that's the best advice is don't don't ask me ask your vet right don't don't don't, don't go off of whatever a youtuber tells you to feed your dogs you just talk to the professionals but but we went with purina one and what i found was so we can find that um anywhere and dallas is on the same thing as purina one chicken and rice but it's a digestive health formula and that was the key once i got her on that digestive health and the extra probiotics she has not had it's been about was it five months now i haven't had any more stomach issues with her it, it, it was almost a blessing that we had to kind of test more because it, it, we found a food that was actually better for her that we may not have found otherwise jane says we found that all i or all the iowa dogs are more scared of men interesting and the the other thing that i never thought about so my friend m went in to the the omaha humane society when they wanted to interview me and show me the dogs and whatnot and i had even more of a beard than i do at the time and i think i wore a hat i think and, and so they were like well we we i think we took the hat off what are you licking but but yeah they even said that they they weren't sure with the beard how that would affect the dogs but look i mean once once you adopt them and they get used to it obviously it, it helps but that's interesting to uh hear because you know what and all of the other people that the especially the three primary people i'm sorry pippa's trying to lick my computer if i'm bouncing around guys um or that my co-workers never <laughs> do what i tell them to but but yeah all three people that i found that she would warm up to and worked well with her were actually females so pippa can you stop doing that there's nothing on there so let's see we got another question and, and especially with since we have a guest guys i'm going to try to be uh cognizant of the time so we're not going to go too much longer because i know you've got it's holidays and you're doing me a favor from coming up here and if people have questions on i mean i do this every week so they can always ask me and we can always get answers for them as well so let's go about maybe 10 more minutes guys um i'll try to get through the questions quickly and then then we'll go ahead and wrap it up so we don't keep all of her time um megan has do you know do they somehow realize they are siblings and all of them fixed before being adopted out do they somehow realize they are siblings so I will say that Luma has met many other Iowa dogs because the San Francisco Samoyed and Rescue would do um, an annual picnic. Hey, Luma, be nice, be nice. Um, and when she's met her other Iowa friends, Luma, hey, okay, okay, okay. Um, she actually does. She totally recognizes them. I remember like at, that, at the first picnic she went to, she was really stressed. And then she saw this one other dog and she just started like freaking out with excitement. And I was like, oh, is yours an Iowa dog too? And not only was it an Iowa dog, but it was one of the ones that came up with her during the rescue. I always um, thought so. She totally recognized them. Luma, be nice. I thought it would be cool because Pippa was part of four females that they kind of housed together. Obviously, there was all, also males that she was caged or uh, housed with at the puppy mill. But um, I'm going to share the screen real quick because I've got your picture of that actually here. So let's show everybody that. This is let's make sure I share the right thing. I got to make sure I keep my audio shared. So hopefully everybody can see this now. I just got to click a couple buttons. I think, can I make that? Hopefully that's bigger. So you guys, this is what she's talking about. This is on her Instagram of Luma's. This, I think, is the whole, um, all of the, the whole meetup. But the second picture here, tell me if I'm wrong, but this is actually just dogs that were rescued from the puppy mill, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So you can see Luma front and center um, with the sunglasses on in the middle. Uh, just back, back just a little bit. Um, oh, that's Luma right there? Wearing your sunglasses. And then um, I think the dog on the right who's lying down kind of by the purple blanket um, with the blonde woman, that was the dog that she recognized. Or no, no, that wasn't the dog that she recognized. It was the one in the purple shirt the, in the left in front. Um, so Luma, when she was rescued, she was in the Lion King group. She was named Nala, and that was Timon in front. And the two of them definitely recognized each other. Oh, very cool. My dogs have decided it is playtime, so they're about to get very loud and wrestle each other. So I'm going to turn off my mic, and uh, I'm still here. If you need anything, I'll add into the chat. Uh, but thank you so much for having Absolutely. us, and it's been so much fun getting to talk to everyone. They are ready for playtime. <laughs> Thank you for oh, you being willing to come up and share the story. I was hoping we'd get at least one person. So thank you so much. And 
we'll we'll keep in contact on that Facebook group. So uh, thank you for coming up and and have a good night. I'll try to answer the questions and then we'll get this wrapped up. Have a good night. Oh, that's so exciting that we got somebody up here. Uh, thank you so much to Julia for that. And thank you for, um, oh, no, I'm forgetting the name, Jane, for, for coming in here and, and talking about this as well. I'm going to try to go through the rest of the questions if, if, I, if I can answer them. And then we'll probably just wrap it up. I, I don't know. We might, may, I might try to do this like once a year around the anniversary time. Th this kind of, I, with my school and my work, I didn't have a whole lot of planning time. Like I would have loved to start planning it uh, a month in advance. Uh, Jane says, I try to trim nails every two weeks, a minimum. I need to improve on that then. <laughs> I do have the stuff. It's finding the time to do it. Uh, Tim, does anyone want to wrap my Christmas presents? <laughs> Any volunteers? Volunteers. We need three more thumbs up and then we'll give the dogs a treat. Or the, the it's not really. Oh, she, she heard treat. Tell you what, we don't, let me scroll down. We'll, we'll give them the treat right now and then we'll I'll look for the last questions and we'll wrap it up, guys. You get on the bed. I'm going to be covered in for. Okay, you got to get down. Get on the bed. Get on the bed. Go ahead. Get on the bed. Now, Dallas, you're going the wrong way. Come on. Let's get your treat. You got to get on the bed. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, you got to get on the bed. You know where you get your treats. Go on. Get on the bed. No, Pippa, you're on the wrong. You got to go over there. Come on, Pippa. <laughs> Pippa, you're getting tangled. Pippa. There you go. There you go. Good girl. You guys did so good. Wait. You got set. Wait. Take. There you go. Good girls. Give them their reward for somewhat behaving. <laughs> Okay, so they're they're enjoying their snack. Let's scroll down here. Um, okay, here we go. I think I'm back and set up. Tim says statement: Duke needs to be mu needs to be muzzled to clip his nails. See, I don't even have a muzzle. Never even thought of that. Hmm. Although maybe it... no, I don't want to put a muzzle on her. The only, my thought that came into my head is sometimes Dallas gets aggressive with really small dogs and maybe putting a muzzle on her would make that safer, but I'd rather just watch her closely and keep her on a leash when I need to. Solex. <laughs> oh, man. We got Bree in the house saying, hi, Nate. Everyone, sorry I'm late. Not a problem at all. We're just glad you're here. Everybody saying hi to Bree. She was older than 12. I don't know. that I, I might have missed a comment because I started scrolling. Sandra, I'm going to say good night. Have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Sandra. I'm just going to scroll through the end here. I'm, I should start looking at timestamps. This came in at 10.02, so I'm not too far behind. Tracy says, question, I missed the beginning. Was people who abused them put in jail? So they were not. Um, and, and I talked a little bit about this because Iowa does not have strong um, animal welfare laws. And that's why the ASPCA, I believe, was even hesitant to go in until it was a really bad situation because they'll end up doing a lot of work. They got to get cussed. They have to manage to get custody of the dogs at first. And luckily, the this breeder did end up giving up custody of the lot of, do of the dogs without uh, she still fought in court for other things. But she did let a lot of dog, not all the animals, but a lot of them so that the adoption process could start because the animals need to continue on and, and start recovering from all of that. So the i believe the final i didn't follow it real closely i didn't want to think too much about it to be honest with you i just wanted to focus on pippa um they, because you know she also had her husband she lost her husband the year before so i i don't know i've got mixed feelings on it the the final outcome i think it was either 14 or 17 counts that they charged her with and she was found guilty but she was only put on two years of probation which basically meant I, I, I think, don't quote me on this, I, I, I have not read like the case or anything, just news articles. Basically, she, I, I don't think she was allowed to have animals for two years or breed, which that two-year period is over. And I, I haven't heard, I don't think anybody really knows 
if, if she has animals. I think some people have tried to figure out if she's breeding and nobody has, I haven't heard that she is breeding again. I don't, but I don't know. So yeah, it, she, she was, she was found guilty of, I think, 17 charges of animal neglect, but the punishment isn't very strong. But, and, and I'll tell you, you know, the, the case that they have to build, it's very hard. We talked about that a little bit. Um, so they put in a lot of work and that, that might be why they're hesitant to do it all that often uh, until those animal welfare laws and it goes state by state. So, you know, what, what can you do, I guess? Uh, so if Nate is poo-pooing on us, we're, what? I give up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to scroll down. I'm looking for, Jane says those are the ones that came to the picnic. Yeah, so so if you guys want to look at, absolutely check out her Instagram. She's, I have an Instagram. I'm not, I, I focus more on YouTube. She does have a lot of um, content. I think her, Luma has like 700 either videos or pictures. If, if you guys want to check that out of those meetups that that's really cool that they do i'm a little bit jealous of, of the people that are out in the san francisco area with those meetups because we didn't get to do that in omaha I, I think through the facebook group i know everest which which is the other youtube channel that i showed you who has the three videos i think they were about an hour away from me but we never did do a meetup and i i think i did find i can't remember who it was but one of Pippa's other litter mates was somewhere in the metro area, but we never did a, a meetup. But ah, uh, thank you, D. I I really appreciate that. It, it, it's a little bit different than what I normally do on my lives, but I wanted I, I just wanted to do it because we can kind of talk about it now. But thank you so much, Susan. And, and I'll tell you, like I said, thank you so much for Julia for coming on and Jane for being. And, and there might be some other people in chat that are just watching or might rewatch it later so <laughs> we got bouncing clouds yes thank you for julia for for sharing your story i i was worried because i you know not everybody wants to come on youtube right <laughs> I, I i never thought i would want to quite frankly um i'm gonna keep scrolling and then we're gonna get this wrapped up kenny says does julia have a youtube channel she does not the the only one that i'm aware of from that group that has a youtube channel from the from from the the rescue dogs would be that um, fluffy land cloud that recently started theirs um, that I have linked in the description. So there is one other, they have three videos up. If, if, if you like the content I make of my dogs, they've got some fun ones up that you can look at. Um, Solix is talking something about llamas. I'm just going to keep moving on because I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to get this wrapped up, but I do want to catch all these questions. Question, question, question. Will you be able to meet, meet, San Francisco when they do yearly meetup, you know, because I'm traveling now, I don't know what time of year they do it. I will be in California, but probably Southern California. So I don't know. I, I might keep an eye out for it or they might tell me, but it, it would depend if I'm in the area. The other thing, I, I don't know that I was really planning to go back to the Bay area with the travel trailer. So I don't know. It, it, I wouldn't rule it out. I would, it, I would see where I was at at the time if I heard about it. Uh, question, how did you get them to eat slower? Um, so my friend, my friend M, right, uh, that that I said, if I get one, will you help me? She was the one that helped me with that. She actually, because she does work with a lot of rescued animals, she, she was able to uh, kind of temporarily donate some things for me as I worked through the adoption process and get Pippa going. And there was a special bowl that it, I'm trying to remember how it was, if it was round or if it was like star shaped but it's it's not like a bowl that they can just scarf it down they actually have to work around so we 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 put that with pippa um dallas still scarfs her food down but P pippa would be the one that would eat so fast and then she was like burping and stuff that i was like i don't think it's good how fast she's trying to eat and and, and so yeah there, there, there's a special dog dish that you can do and as far as getting them to wait for the food that that was just me being really stubborn um i'd get them to sit I, I didn't do this right away, obviously. Um, there was a process of getting Pippa used to me first and all of that. But I, I, I just got stubborn and said, you guys have to wait. And if they started going before they were supposed to, I took the bowl away, made them sit. Then I put it down, tell them to wait until they got the command. So that, that took a little bit of, of time and patience. And Is there a certain time of year that they shed more than others? Uh, the spring and the fall. And, and, and kind of like Julia was saying, Pippa's not real bad. 
I, I, I don't know if it's a full, if it's because they're full Samoyed where uh, Dallas is a mix. And I think it's the mix and, and her fur, her fur. If you guys ever get to feel uh, pet my dogs, Dallas's fur, she looks real fluffy, but her fur is a lot coarser than Pippa's. Now, not everybody gets to pet both of them because it takes a lot to get Pippa to warm up to people. But like at M21, when we got to meet uh, Travis and I and Kevin, um, I'm trying to think there was, I mean, Amy obviously got has met both. And, and anybody that does get the chance to actually. <laughs> so can I start the shenanigan show now? <laughs> this is killing me having to behave. <laughs> I was just talking about you, Travis and I. Uh, Julia is saying, nice chatting with everybody. Merry Christmas and happy happy holidays. No, I think everybody's thanking you, Julia. That that was really, really awesome that you were able to come up here and willing to come up here. We are watching her. I'm not sure. So Sometimes I lose context as I try to go through these. So this is a good point. Um, Sam, I, I was going to mention this, and thank you for the reminder, Jane. You know, this is a time of year where a lot of people do a lot of donations for tax purposes or just the extra Christmas money. They get bonuses, whatever. And another reason I did want to highlight this around this time, there are rescues out there like San Francisco Samoyed Rescue, which you heard how involved they were a year before the ASPCA was even able to go in. Obviously, the ASPCA, I read somewhere that it must have cost, I, I think it was this whole thing cost them probably over a million dollars to do and to address. Um, for me personally, the Animal Rescue League in Des Moines is where I got Dallas. Well, I didn't get Dallas, but my friend got Dallas and I ended up obviously with custody and taking care of her because my friend got sick. Um, and also the Omaha Humane Society. Uh, we also, you, you guys all know Charlie Grace's adventure. She works a lot with dogs and she works a lot with animal rescues. A lot of the things she does, she does donations to a lot of the rescues that she works with. Um, so, so just, just a reminder, if you're looking for, um, some of these things to donate, obviously I know Jane with, uh, the San Francisco Samoyed rescue, I'm sure they have a way to get donations to them. Um, but, but those are just some ideas because ho hopefully this highlighted some of the work that they had to put in and none of it is cheap. And one other thing, while I'm thinking about it, Kat mentioned it earlier. Oh, and I, I, I hate seeing these things come up. We talked, you know, this whole time about this raid of 300 animals in Omaha. And, and I, I've only seen a couple of posts because you guys know I've moved from that Omaha area. So I, I get a lot of Facebook posts from that area. There, there was, I think just a couple days ago, a raid on a house, and I, I don't know if it was Omaha Humane Society now has 500 animals in their care that they're trying to take care of, or if this house specifically had 500. I, I haven't gone in and read the articles in depth yet, but Omaha just did a big raid in the town that I just moved from, actually, and it looked, it, I, I don't think it was dogs. It was all sorts of guinea pigs and birds and reptiles. So, you know, they, if, if anybody has extra to help them get those animals taken care of, you know, just, just keep some of these rescues and shelters in mind they, because, you know, none, none of it's free for them to do. Uh, puppy mills need to be shut down. The true breeders get screwed some, because of some of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it does go back to some of those laws. I, I won't get real political, but. If, if the state laws don't allow for them to be shut down, then, then even the, the rescue groups and everybody, and I see, I see Travis is starting the shenanigans. Here he goes. So I'm going to look for, so Jane is saying this, I think this is to the shedding question, usually in the first week in October. And, and what a lot of people don't know about the dogs is, um, one really bad thing is to shave the dogs because they've got the double coat and people think like, you know, shave a dog in summer. You guys see, we'll, we'll see some of those really bad pictures on social media where they get shaved. That actually acts, that acts as insulation and they have like a winter coat and a summer coat. And, and so I, I, I think most dogs kind of change that into their winter coat around this time that Jane is talking about. I know for Dallas, and, and again, Dallas is not, pure Samoyed. She's, she's a mix of Samoyed and something else. Um, she sheds a lot in like, as it starts warming up, she also does the fall thing, but it, for, for her personally, she does a lot 
in like May. I, I, I try to, you know, though, and those are the two times a year that, 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 I mean, you're, you've always got to stay on top of the grooming, but those are really important. You just cannot get behind on it. Oh, we got trolls, 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 trolls. Trolls have been all around lately. Oops, muzzle won't do it. We need handcuffs. I don't know what that's, <laughs> don't know what that's going towards. Um, okay, we got Tim is sharing the Facebook page. Thank you for finding that time for exploring. There's the Facebook page for the San Francisco Samoyed Rescue Group. I And I will say from just following Samoyeds, I think they are probably the most known in the entire country. I, I do know Utah has one as well that's pretty well known. There, there's like eight other questions, or not other questions. I, it's so it's got me distracted there. Um, I think there's like eight or something throughout the country, but th those are the two bigger ones. And I, I will say I've heard the most about this the San Francisco Samoyed Rescue, not just because Jane's here because Julia came on, but they, they, they do have a very good reputation. Solex, Solex causing trouble. Okay, I'm scrolling. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Lisa, Lisa wants to come in. I'm scrolling real quick. Uh, more people saying thank you for Julia. Kev, their fur mom. Absolutely. You, you, if, if you go watch some of her videos on Instagram, I, like I said, I was really impressed. Really, really impressed. Uh, San Francisco's rescue picnic is usually the first Saturday in October. So that, that would probably be hard for me to make. I, I'd, it takes some special planning. I'm usually going to probably be, well, we do the, the September Michigan meetup in, in towards the end of September. So that'd be a long ways to go. And I think next year there's the Branson meetup in October. And these are, uh, not dog meetups. These are like, YouTube travel meetups I'm talking about, Jane. I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. Where's your wrench? I'm just looking for SSQQ. I, okay, I think I caught up. All right, guys. So you guys you guys know me. I hit my 90-minute limit. I, I try to go to an hour, but I, I end up doing 90 minutes. Um, let me double-check my notes real quick. I think I have a couple quick reminders. Um, the Raid Parade tomorrow, I always try to remind people Thursday night, remember the Raid Parade tomorrow starts at 2 p.m. Eastern. It starts over at Roy and Becky's. We do have a uh, a premiere in that. I, I haven't looked at the schedule today. It's obviously with the holidays. I don't think it's as busy as it has been in the last ones. I'm actually, th this is, for me, it's the video. Um, actually, it has the the Spanish moss. It's got the alligator marsh. It has when uh, the Nomok experience came, Kevin with the Nomok experience came. I think it's actually one of my more favorite videos of my own. Um, but then I get surprised. Like, I didn't really like the video that I put out for the last raid parade, but it did pretty decent. So, sometimes I don't know. I, I, sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about, apparently. Um, or know what my, what good content is that I do and what's not. Um, I, I have been putting out a lot of shorts. I, I do want to remind everybody, uh, make sure you go get Angie Hayes Family Adventures. We've been working together, kind of sharing this time next week um i don't know if i'm gonna go live or not it depends where i'm at as far as all of my to-do list so i've told angie if she wants starting next week she can go at this time and if i do go live i will just go after her if she does go and going forward she will go at the time that we went today and i will just go at um what is it 10 p.m central so i'll be a little bit later um but i'm also heading out west so if she's out on the east coast so making her stay up late would just be <laughs> that wouldn't be fair at all uh, and the last reminder that I have down is we'll be doing the monetization party. I've still got a lot of planning to do for that, but that will be January 2nd. So, uh, I, I will eventually get a thumbnail up for that. You guys know I'm already through the whole YouTube program. I just haven't turned on a lot of the monetization stuff. So I just wanted to wait till the new year and not deal with the taxes for one month of, uh, very little ad revenue. So, <laughs> With that, I think I saw one more comment from Jane. Thank you. Love that you are doing this. Everyone hug their fluffers and have a wonderful holiday season. You too, Jane. I And I think maybe next year I'll try to plan some. Maybe I'll do something annually where we can come on and have people like Julia come up. Um, if people are interested, of course. Uh, I'm not going to force anybody to do it. But well, Okay, last question. I see what you're doing there, Tim. You're dealing with Solex. This is the last question I'm taking tonight. Then we're closing it down. Uh, how much feed? How much food do you feed your dogs a day? Uh, Pippa 
I, I've got like a it's a it's a measuring cup that I use, and it goes to the top, so it's a little bit more in a cup. I fill that full. She uh, Dallas gets two times a day of that um, Purina special digestive formula. Pippa gets a little bit less. She gets right around. I, I fill it up to right around the cup or just under the cup, so and twice a day for her. With that, I'm going to close this down. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope everybody has a happy holiday. We will see you Sunday.